one of the things that we've never really talked about on the show and on the sourcing show, while we dive into different um, resources and tools, we've never taken a step back and talked about when you first meet with your hiring manager or a company, and, and that is creating a market map. And so that's what I'm going to do for us really quick. It's going to take about 10 minutes because I'm going to blow through it really quickly, but I'm going to show you the template that I actually use and I've been using for the last 10 years um, for my... <laughs> Woo, woo, Robert, half alumni. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> I've been using for the last 10 years, and it's just going to pull in data and information to encapsulate um, the company that you're going to be uh, working with. And I think this is imperative in a couple ways. One, it's going to help your, uh, you know, the hiring manager know that you understand um, the snapshot of the company, which they already do. But also it's going to show them competitively where their opportunities are and also be able to assess the entire pool of candidates that are available out there. And while you can use MZ and you can use LinkedIn ta um, talent solutions for all these type of things, I'm going to show you how to use it, do it for free on on a quick uh quick basis so um i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so this is basically an outline and i have my my sister's a millennial and she always tells me i should stop showing people outlines <laughs> and i should be using more visual aids but that's okay i think you get the gist and i'm not gonna um load this down with a lot of graphs and stuff i'll, I'll leave that to you um another time to use something like this is before your interview and again this only takes 10 minutes but before your interview develop this bring it with you into the interview and send it to the hiring manager after your interview with your thank you note and this attached and then you can add little things in there that and it'll just show you that show them that you really understand their business okay so this is a mark analysis i have it up at the top in the header um, we're doing target.com and of course, you could just go to the website. And um, the first part of the of the um, market analysis is just going to be what the company does. So I got Target.com or Target, and it's an online retail retailer. You can obviously go to their LinkedIn profile or their website and just copy and paste something there. The second part is the financials. One of the sites I love is Crunchbase. I use finance, um, Yahoo Finance, and I use Crunchbase. Those are my two favorite go-tos for when I'm getting financials or any industry specific um, news or articles about a company. Um, so I took this from Crunchbase. Let's see if I can take you. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just gonna assume that you guys um, haven't seen some of these sites. So I'll just show you. Um, on Crunchbase, and they've come a long way, there's tons of data in here. But here's Target, they got the summary, and I just pulled the funding information from right here where it says funding. And um, something that I thought was really interesting, because they're a publicly held company, I wouldn't think that they had so much investments. They have an accelerator program um, in India, because they have a, a big um, uh, presence there. And also, uh, one of their latest acquisitions was a company called to live in um, Palo Alto, I believe, on May 8th, just this year, which is really interesting and, and kind of goes with everything that's going on right now because it's a delivery, um, a, a delivery company that for big retailers, um, and we'll probably get into that later when we're talking about the warehouse role. So this is where I find all this information and the summary. So let me go back to and, and I just put that in the financials, as you can see right there. And then, of course, the um, the trading symbol, the NASDAQ, I got that off of Yahoo Finance. Um, and then you can, you know, you can see how the company is doing. And all this information was on there, too. The website, I put the sector, the industry, um, when they were founded, how many employees. And the next section I have here is the open positions. And so I just copied and pasted those uh, there, and that will give you a good reference when you're sitting down with your hiring manager and you're going over this um, to discuss the specifics of these roles. Um, and then the next one I have down here is the key stakeholders. And again, this is our market analysis for target.com, um, the key stakeholders. And I generally put like the names and they're, and I link the, um, the, uh, and I, and I link their LinkedIn profiles and I show an organizational chart. Okay, so there is this new company called Chartloop, which I am just foaming over. Have you heard of Chartloop, Mark? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, so I've stepped into organizations before where they didn't even have organizational charts 
for the for the jobs we were working on or the company I was sitting and they're like, yeah, we've been meaning to like develop organization. So like, you don't have organizational charts. Um, so this company, uh, they you put in um, the company website and it develops an organizational chart. And um, my husband was was uh, talking to a company and he's like, I wish I knew who, you know, that person's boss was. I was like, I'm going to create an organizational chart on Chartloop for you. So you can go to chartloop.com. See, so I did it for Target last night because it takes a moment to render. I love, I love uh, Chartloop. So I put that in there and I actually print it out and I attach it. And then oftentimes you might find that some of the information has changed, but I think that hiring managers and um, customers, and even like when you're interviewing, they're, they're super impressed with that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my, um, my market analysis. So we were at the open positions and the key stakeholders with our organizational chart. The next section is the top competitors. You can go on Yahoo Finance or on Crunchbase, um, uh, Moz, uh, and, and, and they'll have like, you know, the key competitors. You can do a Boolean search, right? You can do a Boolean search yep. for top competitors and list them there. Um, yeah, um, probably the easiest thing to do is just literally go into Google and just type in list of competitors for XYZ and they'll give it everything to you. Yeah, yeah. Easiest thing to do is just Google it, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to Crunchbase, it will have these lists and it has like these extensive lists that they've already built that are um, top retailers or top retailers in, um, in um, Michigan or um, top companies in this. And you can pull the, those and you can, and you can go through those and use those as a source uh, later. And then um, moz.com, M-O-Z.com, uh, yep. that shows, this is a, your competitive advantage. So oftentimes you can go to a company's website and, and you put it in moz.com and it'll show you all their inbound marketing strategies. So if you are looking for a software engineer, for instance, and or an edge um, engineer or Kubernetes engineer, and um, you know that there is a company that markets specifically to those um, those type of candidates. And so you can actually put their website in there and it'll show all their inbound marketing, their SEO, their top keywords. I use it for my competitors so I can see the keywords that they're using and their backlinks. It shows you the, um, the backlinks like so, and the backlinks are if they have um, articles on other websites and it links back to their website, it shows you where all those are. So um, nice. that just can give you some amazing or top articles that they've written or ways that people find their websites. You know what the top, <laughs> the top in the recruiting industry, the top um, asked question is, how do you develop a recruiting dashboard? That's like the top question. Right. That's, isn't that funny? Or that funny. Um, Yeah. Okay. So, so those were the lists and I put one of them there and that's the retail um, public companies that I got off of Crunchbase. Next, um, you can also get on Crunchbase is events and conferences. And I think one of the biggest resources that we go through um, or sources for candidates is events and conferences. And then I'm sure, you know, uh, we'll go into that a little bit later in when we actually source for this. But again, we're just doing the market analysis. Um, and then of course, diversity, uh, diversity groups that were in that area or if it's geographically located, or if it's in, um, if it's in a, um, for a specific, uh, if it's engineering or if it's finance or marketing. I mean, there's Queer Tech Club, shout out to Sarah Goldberg, love that club, and uh, Black Engineers, Women in Data. Hey, that's one of mine. And, um, <laughs> and then of course, the tech stack and, and skills. Uh, if you go to builtwith.com, and you put in a company's website, it will show you their entire tech stack. Tech stack, yeah. Yeah, like everything that they're working with. Probably not everything, but most things. And I mean, um, it'll give you a pretty, I, I did it for, I did it for Target and it showed that Target had 55 technology products um, and 112 technologies for its website and it listed all of them. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool information. So yeah. last- I've uh, unfortunately, with a company like that size, like you end up actually because there's like all these different systems, some of them legacy and some of them new, and then the teams are so different. You basically end up with like a lot of different tech stacks like throughout the entire organization. Yeah, 
and determining which ones that they are actually using, you'd have to what go to the job descriptions and, and even if you go to the job description, they're like they like list every single language and every single like you know like thing that you would actually do if you were an engineer and you're like, okay, well, this isn't really the job. You know, you'd have to kind of read between the lines of the job and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The last piece that I'm going to jump to Mark and we're going to dive into sourcing is the candidate market analysis. And like I mentioned earlier, you can get really good snapshots geographically and you can use MZ, LinkedIn, Talent Solutions, Gardner, Talent Neuron. I mean, those are all really great, expensive, but for free. And I think back in the old days, <laughs> <laughs> back in the have old days, Mark, have you, have you looked at the BLS? I, I have. Dot gov. I have. Yeah, I, I have. Mean, there's free information there. It's like awesome. You will get, if you're into data and graphs. <laughs> I mean, BL, B, so the BLS and then also like Department of Labor, like all these government sites, like it's all, it's like a bunch of data that is done for you, research data. And it's, it, they try and it's, it has to be kept up to date. So if you go to the BLS, they just have all these beautiful <laughs> graphs that you can almost get lost in because you're just like, whoa, who would ever thought to analyze that? Um, but you can look at employment projections, right? Like that's probably one of the things that we're gonna, we're gonna look at employment projections for specific areas. And then also the, the number of companies that um, are in that specific industry. So for Target, I might look at the number of retailers that are in that. Now, now why would I be interested in industry when you, know, you could, I'm, interest, I'm interested in industry and geography first because one, I mean, yes, we're all working from home and, and it's a remote workforce probably for the next year, but companies are still going to want eventually probably next year for people to come into the office. So we'll start ge geographically next to the company and then move out and then, you know, discover that. And then the second thing, industry, it is, it is, and I have a graph for this, but <laughs> it is known that if you if you hire somebody from within the industry their ramp up time is going to be a lot less than their ramp up time if they were um they had to to learn the, you know the the specific information and stuff right i mean that just seems to make sense but here's a bls.gov here's all the really cool graphs i mean you can click through these graphs right here <laughs> and like six of the 10 fastest growing occupations. I, I mean, you're just like, whoa, I was looking at this last night and I was like, wait, what was I here for? Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the, um, the employment projections. So we went on the BLS, we got the, the 4,000 companies in the industry who are located in California. And um, so you get a snapshot of the, the number of companies within there. That's the first thing that you can get from the BLS. And then the average employees, we're gonna say it's 400, cause I'm just gonna make this, this uh, simple for the ratios. Um, so if we said the average um, number of employees in each of those companies was 400, and then the next part down here, the ratios. So there are, there are industry ratios that you can get that are employee to programmer ratios. And I get asked for these all the time by hiring managers, especially in technology. And it's because they use them to justify their hiring for their next budgets and quarter. Yeah, or, yeah and I'm just like, oh, and, and I kind of caught on to it for a while, but it makes you kind of an additional resource. So it's great to have these. So, yeah. and, and they're published by IBM. So um, a programmer ratio might be one programmer for 200 employees. Um, so, so what that means then is, if you have um, 200 employees and there's one program, and then this is obviously depends on the maturity of the company and what technologies that they're using. So they're going to vary, but this is just like the general ratio, right? So, yeah. um, so if we have 4,000 companies and there's two programmers, that's, we're saying that there's about eight, the pool of 8,000 programmers available uh, obviously eliminating all the people who won't relocate and that sort of thing and then we looked at the bls for the increase of um the projections for employment um for software engineers and we add that and then uh, you know the rise how many how it's going to grow the amount of people who are entering and then of course the job changes turnover and growth which is generally turnover is generally about 10 percent and then growth in that area how many people graduates are coming out of school with certifications and that sort of thing into that industry about five percent so that's like 15 percent new programmers in that area um right. so that is a way to look at 
your um, your your um, your market analysis. Bring that with you. It shows. It just makes you an incredible resource and and um, gives you a starting point for any of your jobs.